We are now entering the world of part-to-part -part versus part-to-whole ratios. And you might think that those sound very similar. And while they are, they are they're vastly different. So when we're looking at this, part-to-part -part simply means if we have a ratio, the numerator and the denominator are both part of the population. So if you're thinking about you know males to females, well, if we talk about males over females, those are both part of the human population, right? We're not talking about males to everybody. We're talking about males to females. So it's part to part. Whereas if we're talking about part to whole, right? Numerator, denominator. The numerator is part of the population. Why the denominator is everybody. So this would be like males to the total population. There's the difference. So the big key is identifying the denominator and what's there. Now, when you're looking at this up here in this big darker gray box, part to whole ratios can be exp expressed as percentages, meaning we could say 30% of the population is male, right? You can talk about percents. In part to part ratios, we cannot. So we are going to leave part to part ratios as decimals. Oop, there's not an E in decimals. As we uh, use percents to talk about part to whole. That is kind of the big difference when you're doing your interpretation. All right, so let's go ahead and look at one of these. In a class of 26 students where there are 16 males and 10, 16 men and 10 women, the ratio of men to all students is 16 to 26. We could also say 16 out of 26 are men or 61.5%. We can change that to a percent because the total is 26. So we're talking about part to whole in the example that they just gave us here. So now let's go ahead and look at this example. In the example above, what is the ratio, excuse me, of women to the whole class? Now, when I'm thinking about my ratios, I like to do um, words first. So I'm talking about women to the whole class. So how many women are there? Well, there's 10. So my numerator is 10, and the whole class is 26. Now we know in mathematics, we always want to reduce our fractions so 10 and 26 are both even. We divide by 2. That gives us 5 over 13. Now, part 2. Can this be written as a percentage? Well, look at your denominator. We're talking to everybody, part to whole, so the answer is yes. Explain my reasoning. We're dealing with a part to whole ratio. So if we take 5 and divide that by 13, that gives us a decimal of 0.38, which is roughly... 38%. So interpret this in a meaningful sentence. 38% of the students are female. You could obviously add more words, um, but because I'm limited in space, there's my little break there. Okay, next we're going to look at this table. The next couple questions are going to be over this table. So I first just want to look at it. So we're talking about civilian labor force in thousands. So each one of these groups has a particular <clears throat> number in thousands, right? Remember that means three zeros at the end of this. Um, that's how many people are in that particular age group. And then the next part, the unemployed. So in the less than a high school diploma, 873,000 over 10,971,000 ,000 are unemployed. That's how we're getting this number here. When we look at high school graduate, 1,920,000 ,000 out of 35,322,000, ,000, that's how we're getting this number here. Okay, now let's look at the next. We're going to flip back and forth between that one. But the unemployment rate is a ratio of the number of unemployed to the number of civilian in the labor force, which is what we just showed, right? That's, that's these fractions that I just wrote down. But then it says, is this part to part or part to whole? Answer, part to whole. Because, oops, wrong way. Because these numbers represent the total for that group. So even that, though we're not talking about the total of the entire labor force, we're still talking about part to whole in that particular area. So these are part to whole ratios. Okay, that... That paused at some point, and I don't know when it did. So hopefully I didn't miss too much here. But we want to answer, we want to figure out these two. So we're going to take 912 divided by 32,684, and we're going to take 429 divided by 19,449. 
So we want to do that in order to find out those percentages, which gives us roughly 2.8% and 2.2%. So these are part to whole ratios in, uh, in those spots. Okay, let's move on. So we're still back to here. So now we're, we're dealing with this. So consider the values in the civilian labor force in thousands row. All right, so that's this one. Could we approximate the total number of civilians in the labor force? The key word here is approximate because we know that every day these numbers change, right? People earn degrees every day. Uh, people die every day. People are both right. We have all kinds of things that are happening. So approximate is the key word. So can we approximate? Yeah. We absolutely can. And how would we do that? Well, we would just add all of these numbers together. So if I add all of those numbers together, I end up with 135,906,000. ,000. Now, 1,000 means three zeros, so this would be the same as just adding three more zeros, which is roughly 135 million, well, closer to 136 million. Letter B. Calculate the ratio of people with some college, no degree, to the total civilian labor force. Okay, so we're looking at some college, no degree, to the total. Now, obviously that's part to whole because look at my denominator. It's total. So some college, no degree is here, 22,706, and the total is the number that we just found, 135,906. Since these numbers are both in thousands, I don't need to put thousands at the end. I can just go ahead and change that. And, beautifully enough, this is part to whole, so we can go ahead and change it to a percent. We're going to interpret that on the next page. Interpret the ratio, so again I had 16.7%. If we write that in a meaningful sentence, roughly 16.7% of the civilian, I forgot my N, labor force, labor force, look, I made that one word, has some college, but no degree. And there would be, so since it's parked whole, we can use a percent, so much easier to interpret. Letter D, calculate the labor, the ratio of laborers with associate's degrees, okay, so now we're talking about associate's degrees, to laborers with some college. Well, notice that these are each part of who we're talking about. So this is a part-to-part -part ratio. So associate's degree are here, 14,774. Some college, 22,706. And that gives us a decimal approximation of 0.65. And if we put that over 1, that means for every one person with some college, no degree, there's 0.65 of a person with an associate's. If we would move our decimal just one place over, we'd get 6.5 over 10. This is a way of just interpretation. So roughly for every six and a half people who have associate's degrees, there are 10 people with some college, but no degree. Last page. We have this information is now given in two different bar graphs. So compare the two graphs and why do they follow different patterns? Well, first you really wanna look at these. They're both talking about unemployment the top number, though, talks about un unemployment in terms of numbers, and this is in uh, unemployment in terms of rate. So when you think about how those numbers um, are, are calculated, these are just total unemployment, right? So they're thinking less than a high school diploma. This is how many people. So if you think about it, you're comparing this kind of to everybody. When we get down here to the rate, remember how we found those rates? We did... Um, the, each thing had a different denominator. And it had a, a different denominator because we were talking about different groups, right? Less than a high school diploma was the number of people who were unemployed in that group out of the total for that group. So since they have different denominators, that's why they have different patterns. This is dealing out of everybody. This is the, the number of unemployed out of all the people in the labor force. So they have different patterns because, um, oh, that's not what I wanted to write. Different patterns because in the top, they have the same denominator because they're talking, they're based out of everybody. And in the bottom graph, they have different denominators 
because each group has, and this is what I'm talking about, this is the denominator for this group, this one is the denominator for this group, here's the denominator for this group. Since they all have different denominators, your bars are going to be all out of whack. So there's that. Part two, discuss any general conclusions from this one. Well, it looks as if the higher the degree, or the more advanced the degree, the lower the unemployment rate. <clears throat> right, and that's, that's what it shows. But also notice there are far fewer advanced degrees than bachelors, some college, high school equivalent. But still, it shows that the more advanced degree you have, um, the lower the unemployment rate. And that's part to part and part to whole.